I would like to introduce today's speaker. Dr. Themis Michelides is a plant pathologist with the University of California at Davis and the Kearney Agricultural Research and Extension Center. Today, he's going to be speaking on the blight phase of Botrysferia disease of pistachio and walnut and its management. And now I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Themis. So you can go ahead and uh, share your slides. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, sorry today, my voice is a little harsh because I had a cold uh, last week. Uh, I thank uh, everyone for uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. I know some of the growers are busy with the walnut uh, uh, harvest right now. So my uh, title here is the blight phase of Botrysphere. In fact, Botrysphere disease of uh, pistachio and walnut. I made this decision to uh, uh, talk about this uh, uh, blight phase of uh, the Bochesphere diseases because uh, it's not so well known. We know that the uh, members of uh, Bochesphere family uh, are, are well known as uh, kangia pathogens by attacking shoots, branches, scaffolds, trunks, and causing killings of these plant tissues. And also Bochesphere fungi can cause uh, decays of tropical and subtropical uh, fruit, causing uh, post-harvest uh, decays. And uh, uh, however, the Bochesphere diseases are not well known for the uh, as causing uh, fruit uh, blight, which is associated with uh, very major yield, uh, yield losses. And today, I'll give you two examples that feed this uh, uh, the disease that really the disease that really reduced the yields, and that is the butchersphere panicle and shoot blight of pistachio and the butchersphere canker of uh, and blight of gourmet. But before we go into these uh, two diseases uh, to describe the uh, blight phase, uh, first of all, some definitions. Uh, uh, what is uh, really a blight? It is uh, the killing of uh, entire vegetative and uh, fruit into plant tissues as a whole. The pathogen does not colonize all the blight tissues. A blight cannot occur without can occur without a preceding development of the canker. However, blight can result to the development of the canker. And uh, uh, what is a canker? Canker is a continuous mass of kill tissues in trunks, scaffolds, branches, and shoots of plants. The pathogen colonizes all these uh, uh, canker tissues and beyond uh, the canker margins. And a canker can result to the development of a blight, but uh, to uh, have a blight to occur does not need uh, a canker, as I said before. So the first example is Bochersphere panic on a shoot blight. As you see, the name indicates the main uh, types of symptoms. We have a canker on top, and here we have the uh, cluster and uh, panicle and shoot blight, uh, very typical for this uh, disease. Early in the spring, we have a shoot blight, but uh, uh, this occurs in orchards where we have inoculum of the pathogens that cause the butchersphere blight. And we see uh, early in the season, uh, the uh, blighting of shoots, uh, uh, the green shoots. And uh, this occurs because we have uh, infested uh, uh, buds by, uh, by the spores of these uh, pathogens. Now, uh, if this occur, if we, the temperatures are uh, high enough in the spring, early spring, we'll have this uh, uh, type of uh, this type of blight. If uh, um, a bite is, inf is infested uh, with a conidia of the fu fungi that cause biosphere blight, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, the infection did not occur earlier because of uh, maybe like lower temperatures, we uh, then the infection can develop later. And then we have a blight of this mature uh, shoot that is very distinct in the, in the green canopy with, because it has uh, brown uh, leaves. The uh, shoot blight of butchersphere can occur in both uh, female trees, as you can see on the left, and also in male trees, uh, uh, as you can see in the right of this slide. Uh, I talk about infested buds, uh, spores that are trapped uh, among the scales of the bud. And I, as I said, when the temperatures are high in the spring, you can have a uh, uh, flower blight, uh, like uh, this panicle, which is very uh, young, it was blighted because the infection from this uh, uh, 
spores uh, to go off and uh, 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 kill the, uh, the, um, the flower, the uh, young panicle. Now, if uh, uh, the temperatures are low in the spring, uh, uh, the, uh, the these uh, spores will wait until late in the season when the temperatures increase, and then they can cause infection at the base of the rachis of the cluster. Uh, this main axis is called rachis, and this will result to blighted cluster, as you can see later in the season, and because this takes time to develop. Also, something that is not too well known is the leaf blight. You can see these leaves of pistachio are very clean. There is no lesions, no necrotic lesions. However, we have a blight, at leaf here, and this can occur uh, uh, as a first symptom in, uh, in, in orchards in Northern California. These infections are because the base of the uh, petiole or the uh, crossings here where the, uh, the leaflets are attached can be infected and then the entire leaf is blighted and uh, uh, causes a uh, severe defoliation. One uh, very common characteristic uh, on the infections of the fruit is that uh, we have late infections. In other words, early in the spring, you don't see any symptoms on the fruit in a normal year, unless you have very, uh, a lot of rains. In a normal year, if you have a lot, uh, a lot of uh, inoculum in the orchard and you have uh, some rains, uh, some infections can occur, but you do not not see any symptoms. And when I say a normal year is a, a normal average rainfall, 10 to 12 inches. Uh, but when you have a lot of uh, rain in the spring, then and a lot of inoculum in the orchard, then you get these uh, infections that we call quiescent infections, small infections that uh, start, but they do not develop. They'll wait until the fruit matures uh, later in the season and will blight the fruit. This was the case uh, when uh, and how this disease was uh, discovered. Uh, this uh, chart here shows the rainfall of uh, California from 1979 to 2023. And uh, uh, the disease that which was discovered in 1984. In 1980, in the winter of 1982 and 1983, there was a, 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 a excessive rain and we had about 14 inches above the average rainfall. And in 1984, we discovered the uh, first butchosphere disease up in some orchards in Northern California. Uh, initially, the industry thought that this is not very important. They supported some research. We discontinued the research, uh, but uh, as a plant pathologist, I, I tried to uh, monitor the pathogen, uh, which was at that time butchosphere dothidia. And uh, eventually we show that the, the, the pathogen was spreading uh, throughout uh, California where the uh, um, pistachios are growing. And indeed, uh, we see the major effects of this uh, disease in, 90, in the winter of 1997-98, with another excessive uh, above the average, uh, almost 19 inches, more than 19 inches of rainfall and uh, uh, the disease developed to very, very severe uh, levels. So the industry was uh, uh, um, was in a kind of emergency at that time. We notified uh, the industry in 1995, 96, uh, that the pathogen is all over California. And indeed in 1998, uh, we had a severe epidemic, uh, although in, even in the previous year, 1997, some more just show uh, uh, excessive disease. This epidemic uh, in 1998 uh, and 99 uh, really opened the, our eyes and uh, the industry really was in alert to uh, try to find solutions because the disease was all over the uh, pistachio acreage uh, where the uh, uh, causing major uh, uh, losses. Here you can see the uh, yield uh, reduction. Uh, and this is uh, these are pictures from 1998 when we had the epidemic. Uh, you can see total destruction, total 100% uh, uh, yield, yield, yield loss here. Uh, the pathogens, these pathogens uh, do not uh, kill the trees. They kill all the green tissues, including the clusters, and that's why we have 100% loss uh, of uh, uh, the crop. And at that time, we did not have any uh, real control methods except uh, some cultural practices. And of course, uh, some growers uh, decided at that time 
to uh, uh, remove the uh, pistachio orchards and uh, plant uh, other uh, nut crops like almonds or walnuts. And at, at that time, we didn't, uh, didn't know, we didn't know that which is free of blight would be a major disease also of walnut. So later in the season, summer and fall, if we have uh, uh, rains in August and uh, September, for instance, you get uh, necrotic lesions on leaves. And these lesions expand if their temperatures in October are high, will expand, become like uh, large necrotic lesions uh, with brown centers, very chlorotic, and uh, this can uh, result to defoliation of leaflets and also uh, uh, mainly leaflets at this point. And at that time in summer and fall, uh, some of the latent infections that occur in the spring will develop to uh, uh, cause uh, severe um, uh, cluster blight or panic blight, as we call it. Now, um, if you have infected uh, vegetative uh, buds uh, and uh, uh, flower buds, it will have uh, uh, shoot blight and uh, uh, panic blight, respectively. When their buds are healthy or have healthy uh, healthy shoots and clusters, but also we found out that uh, we have the phase of uh, bud uh, blight, like uh, a, a killing of the buds, because some of this uh, contamination of the buds with the spores can lead, uh, can develop in uh, the fall when, uh, uh, if temperatures are uh, high in September and October, and can kill buds. Um, Bob Klein of the California Pistachio Industry, uh, the director of the uh, research board, uh, developed a, a, a kind of a graph uh, that uh, uh, by monitoring the yields per acre, you can see here during the epidemic years, around the epidemic years 98 and 99, we have a, a reduction of the uh, crop per acre. It shows very clearly and this uh, disappeared at the time when we had the first uh, strobilurin register, which is very effective against this disease. And this is uh, uh, this is the line for the on years, and this is the line for the off years. But uh, it is obvious in the uh, on years that we have a significant reduction of the yields per acre. Another uh, blight that can occur in clusters is the one that initiates through these large hemiptera insects, the leaf wither bug or the stink bugs, other large chlorochloa and uh, other species that uh, uh, feed on pistachios. And we showed in our studies that they can spread the spores of Botrysphere and also create wounds for infection. In this experiment here, we can see when we enclose insects in the bag, bag, bags with, uh, um, with, the, uh, uh, with the clusters, um, uh, we get more uh, infection by Botrysphere. These are artificial inoculations and the, this is the control with no insects. When we increase the uh, amount of wounds, assuming that this insect uh, punctures several times uh, a night, we can see you get more, with more wounds uh, on the nets, you'll get uh, more infection, especially this was shown after five days uh, with the highest level of infection by Botrysphere blighted fruit uh, uh, when we have six wounds per, per nut. So the, these hemiptera insects are detrimental, not only spreading the disease, uh, but also uh, uh, creating uh, the wounds for uh, increasing infection. And here it shows really well uh, you have a, a gnat that is punctured by hemipterum and uh, blighted, then the disease will move from this gnat to surrounding nuts. And then once the infection reaches the rachis, the main stem of the cluster, the entire cluster will be uh, blighted. Now, the canker phase uh, on, the, on the female tree starts from the blighted, uh, from the blighted uh, uh, clusters. And this is a rachis. And you can see if uh, the infection of this, uh, the blighted uh, cluster infection had enough time, uh, the, the fungus will move into the, uh, the shoot. Uh, it shows here, and then this uh, uh, canker will, uh, will uh, grow in both directions because uh, both sides are alive. And so the, the canker, the infection has uh, nutrients to move in both directions. 
And uh, not only that, but also the infection move internally uh, two to three inches beyond the external margin of the canker. And that is why when we recommend to prune the canker uh, uh, branches or tissues to go two to three inches below the obvious margin of the canker. Cankers now can occur also from uh, leaf, uh, leaf scars, from uh, uh, scars of uh, uh, dead uh, buds. And you can see a good example here. This is an infected leaf here. So, uh, and then you can see the canker development and the bud, of course, is uh, dead there as well. Now, all these uh, uh, cankers are very uh, significant for their uh, fungus because they uh, they have the reproductive uh, structure, which is picnidia, wherein uh, picnidia spores or conidia uh, are the cankers. And we show that these uh, cankers can provide uh, viable spores for at least six years. And they are very important because they remain on the tree. It's not easy to remove them. However, the picnidia that can develop on fruit and leaves, uh, leaf lesions, they can fall on the ground. And so they're not so significant as in autumn for the fungus. In male trees also, we can have cankers uh, by Botrysphyria. Here on the left, you have a uh, branch with uh, uh, healthy male flowers. In the middle, you have uh, infected uh, flowers which have darker color. And if, if you remove some of these flowers, uh, uh, you can see the canker that uh, developed here uh, in both sides, again, up and down. And uh, of course, we can isolate the pathogen, not only from the margin, but also if we open the, the stem, we can go even two to three inches uh, uh, beyond the margins. Now, how we distinguish these from the cankers that uh, develop from botrytis, because botrytis also infects the male flowers, especially when the, the spring is cool and uh, wet, we'll have uh, infections of the male flowers and we have cankers like these. Uh, develop. Uh, and uh, uh, in order to uh, diagnose this in the field, you look around to see if you can see this type of infections by Botrytis that have the characteristic shepherd's uh, hook uh, 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 symptom because these uh, uh, shoots apply to much earlier when they're very tender and they bend uh, like a hook. And the other feature that we can see is, uh, at least in the laboratory the microscope, you cannot find uh, picnidia in these cankers, while the, the cankers by Butchersphere will have picnidia. What are the pathogens? Initially, we uh, determined Butchersphere dothidia uh, was the pathogen, and that was morphologically identified. But now we have a differ, a 10 different species in the Butchersphere family that can cause uh, uh, the uh, disease. Among these, the Neophysicoccum mediterraneum, probably uh, that was what we identified as Butrosphere dothidia in those days, because it's very common. And you can see all the candies where we have uh, 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 collected isolates, all have number seven. Number seven is the Neophysicoccum mediterraneum. Of course, Butrosphere dothidia is included, but that is not as common as uh, uh, Neophysicoccum. Mediterranean. <clears throat> now, these uh, pathogens also can infect uh, walnut and almond, and, uh, uh, and here we have uh, seven of these uh, species that can move from uh, one nut to crop to another nut crop uh, with no restriction, no barriers, because uh, these fungi uh, they uh, they are not host specific. Uh, the the crops, the nut crops, are grown close to each other. And so uh, they can move uh, freely uh, from one to the next. Uh, and also, these uh, fungi represent uh, different uh, types of morphological fungi or producing different types of spores. We have uh, 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 fungi that produce uh, uh, single spores, uh, single cell spores with no color, others with uh, a dark color, others that produce uh, uh, two uh, cells, spores dark. And we have one fungus here, the Neoscitalidium gimbitiatum, again in the same family, that really uh, uh, the mycelia break in pieces and become spores. And these are mycelia that fly in the air, uh, actually, but they become uh, it's, uh, become very small. Uh, they call these arthrospores. Now, the other reason uh, we have uh, uh, that uh, this disease became very common 
The Butchersphere uh, horse is very, very extensive. Uh, at least in California, we have at least uh, 50 species that can be infected uh, by uh, Butchersphere in different family plant families. And all these represent uh, 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 fruit trees and nut crops, ornamental trees, forest trees, and also bushes, uh, blackberries and blueberries, etc. I said that uh, all the uh, uh, the cankers that remain of the tree uh, bear pycnidia, pic and if there uh, there is no management of the disease, there will be an accumulation of this in autumn on the trees, and that is mainly uh, the cankers and the rachises, and that will be the main source of the autumn for the disease to develop in the uh, subsequent years. So. We have all these pycnidia on the trees, and then we have the rains. Uh, we have the rains fall and winter, and rains during the spring. All these uh, pycnidia will uh, absorb water in the tissues, and will uh, swell, and then will ooze the spores out, out uh, as a uh, toothpaste coming out from a, uh, from a, a toothpaste uh, tube. As you can see here, all these are the conidia coming out from the pycnidia. Now, the Botrysphereaceae fungi produce two kinds of structures. They can produce pycnidia and also a pseudothesia. However, in pistachio, we never found the pseudothesia, only pycnidia, and that is the main source of the nodule. We, uh, years ago, we did some studies to show how this uh, inocrum spreads around by using this uh, uh, a simple uh, methodology, collecting uh, rainwater. This is uh, a at Kern Agriculture Center, but uh, but also we did it with uh, in the commercial orchards. And in this, uh, we collected uh, rainwater under the canopy with these uh, funnels and the bowls uh, for three years. And we found out uh, here that uh, we can get up to 60,000 spores per milliliter uh, in these three orchards. Uh, uh, especially this year. In fact, uh, I can see that uh, the the orchards uh, this year in 2002 were uh, they had a higher risk for disease development because they had a higher um, uh, numbers of spores that spread around in comparison with the levels of spores that we found in the same orchards in year two and three. So year one uh, here for these orchards was more detrimental for disease development. We also showed that the, 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 the spores can spread uh, beyond the canopy of the tree, not only under, and this was done by putting these funnels about uh, one meter, three feet away from the canopy and at different heights. And here we have uh, the uh, results for three orchards for three years, uh, uh, collecting uh, spo uh, uh, rainwater one uh, three feet away from uh, the margins of the can canopy, we still can find spores. And you can see here from uh, the data that uh, um, the orchard in Yolo County represented with these bars, the dark bars here, is at higher risk uh, in year one, year three, because we are collected very high numbers of spores. And, and this is, uh, you know, uh, two, times uh, 10 to the third, uh, that's uh, uh, 2000. So um, so it is a higher risk. Over the years, again, we did studies where we determine uh, how the uh, uh, conditions, what conditions are needed for infection events to occur. Of course, uh, uh, the, uh, we assume uh, when there is, when there is uh, inoculum and where susceptible tissues, you need uh, uh, you need one quarter of the rain and about at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit to get uh, uh, an infection event by which is here in pistachios. The optimal uh, temperature for the disease development, this is a high temperature disease. That's why it develops the fastest in, uh, during the summer is 81 to 91 uh, uh, Fahrenheit. And we monitor seven orchards and we, uh, we monitor the disease as well, the rainfall. And we found out that uh, total rain above 40 millimeters from December to April uh, triggers uh, uh, severe disease levels. And uh, we several times we emphasize that uh, this disease really needs rains 
in order to develop and uh, spread around. All these studies, uh, uh, studies helped us to develop the disease cycle for Bogosphere pistachio. And we can start here, the sources of inoculum, merely are conchus and rachises uh, and shoots that remain on the tree, but also dead buds and petioles and fruit can provide some inoculum, but they usually fall during the arrangements in, the, in the winter. Uh, but uh, um, those uh, that remain on the tree, the cankers and the rachises, uh, with the rains will produce the spores, and the spores uh, will cause primary infections of the uh, flowers, uh, female panicles, the young female plants, and male blossoms, and the young shoots. As the season, season progresses, if we have rains in uh, uh, the summer, uh, like, uh, let's say, late uh, August or September, and we had the rain this year, the Hurricane uh, Hillary, uh, in August, 10th of August, uh, then we have again, uh, these uh, sources can provide steel in Auckland to cause primary uh, infections. And what happens here, we have uh, infections that occur here uh, from uh, these spores, but this can also produce another set of spores. And then if the conditions remain warm in October, for instance, or early November, still we can have a, a secondary cycle here, secondary infections that can occur. So that's that's a disease uh, cycle. Uh, usually it's one cycle, single, but uh, if we have uh, a rain here, we can have a secondary two cycles. The disease I mentioned that can kill bats, uh, here is the uh, blight of bats, but uh, most frequently when uh, under normal conditions, we'll have infested uh, bats with spores that are trapped among the scales in a normal year in orchards with inoculum. So we use this information to develop a monitoring technique, the bat monitor, uh, as we call it, uh, monitoring the botosphere in the bats, uh, uh, which help us detect and predict the disease pressure in pistachio orchards. And this is done by collecting dormant bats uh, in February, late February to late March. This, uh, uh, this is the right stage of uh, bats to collect. And uh, uh, these are surface sterilized, uh, they are plated in PT plates, uh, after uh, surface sterilization and then incubation at 20, uh, at uh, um, 80, 81, um, uh, 81 uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, uh, then we determine how much butyrosphere we get. We get a lot of volatile air, which is always there, but butyrosphere grows very fast and is very distinct. And from this, uh, we develop this empiric empirical table by monitoring disease uh, and uh, the abutment in 15 orchards. And we develop this scale that uh, give us good indication when uh, when we have no risk or low risk, moderate risk and high risk. And accordingly, uh, we did, uh, decide uh, how many sprays we can apply. Okay, for disease management, I think I have to go a little faster here uh, because uh, I see the time goes really fast. Um, we have a cultural control and this is irrigation management. This really applied uh, uh, early in the uh, time when we started uh, studying this disease because uh, some of the growers were um, irrigating with uh, impact uh, sprinklers. And the first thing we did, uh, in fact, they had uh, the, um, the uh, um, high angle, uh, um, trajectory angle sprinklers. And we noticed that the disease was uh, in the wet canopy. And we uh, changed in a replicated experiment, the sprinklers with a low ankle uh, uh, trajectory angle, and uh, we were able to reduce the disease. So this uh, does not apply now because I, I doubt that any growers are, uh, irrigate with uh, uh, sprinklers, but just in case. With uh, pruning, another cultural practice, uh, sanitation is very good uh, by removing cankers, but uh, winter sanitation, uh, this is mechanical uh, pruning, will not uh, uh, discriminate healthy or uh, cankered uh, tissues. So it can remove some cankered, uh, cankers uh, from, uh, uh, by just doing the winter pruning. But the summer pruning is the one that really can be selectively uh, focused on uh, the blighted uh, shoots or, or the uh, 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 should that have cankers. And uh, uh, with this uh, selective pruning, we can either remove uh, uh, the prunings out of the orchard or burn them uh, if uh, a burning is, is uh, allowed. 
And just by doing this selective pruning, you can reduce the disease by 50%. Chemical control is very important uh, uh, and very effective against this disease. Uh, um, the uh, strobilins, the uh, uh, FRAG11, FRAG7, uh, and the combinations are really uh, uh, excellent for controlling botrytisphere and uh, um, biologicals, uh, though, show very low efficacy against this uh, disease, the botrytisphere pinecone blight. Here we have an example of this uh, trial uh, that shows uh, how much uh, we can reduce the blighted uh, clusters uh, with uh, fungicides. And on top here, you have uh, uh, actually uh, fung fungicides, which are in the group of 711, FRAG 711, that can uh, reduce the disease from 43% in the anterior control down below 5%. All this information is included in the uh, uh, fungicide tables uh, with very uh, very long list of fungicides uh, and uh, uh, shown here with efficacy five and four for uh, as consistent and five excellent and consistent uh, uh, control. Uh, the best time for one spray is early June, but uh, the sprays that are effective uh, for botrytisphere control start in April and end in uh, end of July. So to summarize this, butchosphere pinecone shoe blight is a yield-reducing fungal disease because it uh, uh, it uh, it's it, because it infects uh, the uh, kills the clusters and the current growth shoots and the fruit and buds. The pathogens are widespread because they attack multiple hosts and can be moved uh, around uh, and can be moved among the nut crops easily due to the continuous large nut crop uh, planting. Some of these uh, uh, here, the conclusions also include, uh, uh, pay attention to this because they include uh, some answers for the uh, questions in a way. But your severe pathogens of the winter on infected trees in Pycnidia produce spores that are merely spread by rain. So, uh, the disease uh, could become very severe in orchards uh, that have uh, high levels of inoculum and are followed by uh, wet uh, weather, uh, wet winter and spring, if uh, disease management measures uh, are not implemented. And we had an example this summer where we had uh, some orchards here in the valley with severe uh, uh, uh following a rain uh, in early August. Cultural control of the disease merely involves pruning infected shoes and branches because we remove the inoculum, a lot, a lot of inoculum. And chemical control is done to control uh, 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 the, the sting bugs and by spraying fungicides starting at bloom and uh, uh, until uh, April to the end of July. So the second example of a disease, a blight disease, which is very kind and blight of walnut. And you can see here the high angle sprinkler, and that's where we found severe botrytisphere blight um, in on the canopies of the trees where the uh, um, the canopy was wet from the irrigation. So again, uh, this uh, disease is caused by ten different species, uh, and again, the Neophysicogum mediterranean is the most common. Has number six here, and you can see most of the candies or samples were. Isolates were uh, recovered have the number six. It's uh, the most common, which is Fieriesi fung fungus uh, uh, spread in California. And as I said, seven species are common uh, or uh, can infect walnut, pistachio, and, and uh, almond. One species which is of interest here is Neoscitalidum dimitiatum, that uh, in the 1950s was described causing uh, branch wilt. And uh, this branch wilt can be confused with Botrytisphere blight, because now we have in uh, or walnut orchards uh, blights that are, are caused by Botrytisphere and also uh, Botrytisphere in general, and uh, branch uh, wilt that is caused by that specific fungus, Neoscitalidum, which also belongs in the Botrytisphere family. Again, this disease works like the pistachio Botrytisphere uh, in the spring, uh, we have very nice looking walnuts with no infections. Uh, when we have rains, infections occur. We have the latent infections occurring. The only uh, symptoms we see on the fruit are from the uh, walnut bite, which is a bacterial disease. But uh, most of the time, these walnuts will be nice and clean with no lesions at all in, in the spring 
uh, and uh, um, early summer. The uh, conditions for infection here is, uh, again, uh, for infection events, presence of inoculum, uh, presence of uh, susceptible tissues, and all the green tissues except the leaves are susceptible in this case. And also, uh, because you are dealing with the same fungi, at least one quarter of uh, an inch, uh, inch of, uh, rainfall and uh, uh, at least 50 Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit uh, temperature. Here it shows how the disease progresses. Uh, these symptoms here will show in uh, mid-August to late August as the fruit matures. Some of the latent infections will develop and it will move to the next fruit here. And from the fruit will move into the peduncle and from the peduncle will move into the spur, killing the spur and killing the bats that are developed in the, in the spur. Walnut leaves are not infected, as I mentioned. Here's a close-up. This is uh, a uh, good uh, color of the butcher infected nut, moving to the next nut and moving down uh, through the peduncle. And so how do we know? We have these latent infections. We did inoculation, exper inoculation experiments uh, starting for, uh, as, um, uh, from May to September. And we did uh, uh, inoculation with two species. Uh, we have the new physical compound here. All the nuts will remain on the trees until a commercial harvest. And then we are recorded uh, blighted nuts. You can see even infections early in the season gave us more than 60% of the nuts infected. And uh, also we split the nuts so we determine how much mold uh, from which we have developed in the kernels, as you can see here. Based on this information that we decided, and uh, also from information pest control advisors, that uh, the best time here was uh, um, for spraying was mid-May, mid-June, mid mid-July. This is in a, on a calendar base. So again, uh, infection moving down uh, from the uh, uh, from the nuts, blighted nuts. Infection is moving to create a canker and killing the the bats, which is very uh, detrimental for this disease. You can see here the four bats were infected, but now or the infection can move into the previous year's wood. It can cause uh, this uh, canker. And uh, uh, by uh, having multiple infections like this, we'll have an accumulation of inoculum on the trees like on pistachios. Branches uh, that were killed, uh, spurs that are killed, and all these are on the trees now where the inoculum is present. The rains will follow and will result in uh, wizzing of the pycnidia. And again, again uh, this fungi produced two types of structures. And in walnuts, we do have the ascospores. We have the pseudothesia produce the ascospores. But the main inoculum, again, is the pycnidia because this is not found in every orchard, but the pycnidia are present in every orchard that have butyrosphere disease. Um, other things, in addition to infection, the blight of the fruit, uh, we can have infections of the peduncles. We can have infections of the scars, very similar type of uh, disease as in pistachios, leaf scar infection, dead bud here, uh, of course, and even uh, peduncles and also husk can be infected and you can find pycnidia on all these uh, structures, infected fruit, cankers, etc. The pruning wounds here are very susceptible to infection, which is very different from Bochisphere and pistachios. The pruning wounds of pistachio are not uh, so susceptible, and that's why we don't see it very much. In the walnuts, we see uh, two to three inches, even uh, four, time, uh, four inches sometimes, cankers uh, that initiate from the pruning wound. When we did an inoculation to see uh, how much, uh, how long the uh, pruning wounds are susceptible to infection, we found out with this sequ uh, sequential uh, inoculations uh, that uh, for 16 weeks the, we still could get 10 percent of the uh, um, of the uh, shoots uh, getting infection, and this is because the anatomy of the shoots of walnut is very different than the other plants. In walnuts, we have the uh, central ch channel where there is a pith, and the pith acts like a, a sponge where the fungus advances uh, much faster than what uh, uh, the canker on the wood. And uh, you can see here from this uh, type of infection moves into the xylem then and creates the external canker. Here's the margin, but the fungus is down here, uh, about two inches below the external margin. Here's the, how the healthy piece will look. 
Now, using the infection of the of the of the blight tweaks, we develop a, a monitoring tool, uh, and this is inv this involves uh, collecting uh, randomly uh, well blighted blighted uh, 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 to, uh, to, uh, spurs and uh, shoots, uh, and uh, sending them to a laboratory to examine for pycnidia, uh, and uh, determining uh, uh, the rate of uh, um, infection by Botrysphere. If there's no butyrosphere, all the shoots will be very shiny like this, uh, killed probably by frost or, or uh, other reasons. But when it's butyrosphere, the, the shoots will look bumpy with the pycnidia very obvious there. Also, the same technique is used here for walnuts, uh, collecting randomly 100 uh, walnuts uh, from a field uh, and uh, sort of sterilize them. This is the right uh, uh, size of the um, buds. Surface sterilizing them, plating them, and then incubating the plates to determine the butyrosphere uh, percentage. And using the same table, then we can get an idea about the risk in the orchard and also decide about the number of sprays one can apply. To um, uh, manage the disease uh, here, um, we can follow cultural control, which is uh, pruning dead branches or blighted shoots. And this is made to reduce the inoculum. Avoid sprinkler irrigation that uh, wets the canopy, and this is by using low uh, trajectory angle uh, uh, sprinklers. Uh, controlling the walnut scale is very important. I'll show you a couple of slides uh, because they predispose the shoots to infection by Botrysphere. And of course, so now we have effective fungicides for chemical control uh, by applying the fungicides to control it, this disease. But the best management it, it would be if you combine all these uh, practices, all these approaches. So uh, again, uh, just to remind you, lowering the trajectory angle is very important. Uh, although we didn't do a specific experiments in walnuts, uh, we based the information on the pistachio research. Pruning, pruning uh, is very important here uh, because uh, a lot of dead wood can be removed and uh, reduce uh, the inoculum. Um, and that is uh, very uh, critical in walnuts because also in walnuts we have major branches that are killed and are covered with pycnidia. And this killing is not only the effect of botrysphere, but also can be effect of shading botrysphere and scale. We did some experiment with pruning, uh, a fall pruning and a winter pruning, and different age uh, uh, shoots. And we found out that uh, uh, in the fall uh, uh, pruning, we can get infection 30 to 75 percent, depending on the age of uh, of the uh, of the uh, shoot that we prune, and the uh, all the shoots uh, have higher levels of uh, infection in comparison with the younger shoots. In the winter pruning, uh, you can see uh, winter pruning we have much higher levels, 80 to 100 percent infected, and not so much difference between the older. Uh, uh, shoots uh, uh, pruned versus the younger one or two years. Oh, yeah. And the other thing that when we put all the data together and we compare the size of the of the um, cankers, we see uh, not only we had uh, lower incidence uh, of um, cankers in the younger sh shoots, but also we have smaller cankers in comparison with the older wood. The scale, the scale uh, predisposes the shoots to infection. We have four uh, scales in, in walnuts. Most important is the walnut scale. Um, they, they create these necrotic lesions. When we plate these, we find about 50% of these uh, have uh, botrysphere starting from there and then killing the shoots. In exper an experiment here, we showed that uh, uh, when you have shoots with scales, we inoculate shoots with scales with three, the three species of botrysphere assay. We get about six to seventy-five percent more shoots infected uh, when the scale is present than when it's not present. So definitely, we need to control the scale. Now, chemical control is very important. Uh, in this example here, uh, this year the anterior control had about thirty-eight uh, percent uh, blighted to nuts, and the fungicides here had a significant reduction, although it's overlapping. Uh, the trees are not in good condition, and we have uh, a, a lot of variation here. This is for blighted fruit. We also determined with uh, pruning tires 
uh, in November, how much, uh, 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 what is the level of uh, blight that spurs. The anterior control had 11%, and the treatments had uh, significantly lower, uh, although there is some overlap in here. And here from uh, this uh, data, you can uh, calculate the yield reduction in this orchard in 2016 and 17. The example showed 38% infected, and 80% uh, of this were butyrosphere, about 30% of blighted fruit and the anterior control uh, was lost uh, um, because of the uh, because of the um, butyrosphere. 11.2% kills uh, kill spurs. Uh, if we multiply this with two bites, let's say the minimum that can have, and two bites can produce two spurs in the following year, and each spur two fruit, that will give us 48.8 blighted fruit are lost out of 100 blighted spurs, a potential yield loss for 2017. We can see the reduction of the yields by butyrosphere canker blight of, of uh, walnut. Again, the, there is a table for the walnut fungicide, very similar to the uh, one in pistachios. And um, this is the website where you can get the information. Um, with, uh, we have very effective fungicides now for against this disease, and there is no resistance of this fungi to fungicides. To conclude, uh, going a little fast here, which is fear canker blight of walnut can be very devastating. This is by reducing yield in rainy uh, years. All the green parts except the leaves can be infected. Uh, pruning wounds are very uh, susceptible for at least four months due to the pith acting as a sponge in rainy weather. Fall pruning is better than winter pruning because it results in less infection. Uh, walnut scale predisposes the branches uh, and shoots to infection, leading to uh, shoot blight and needs to be controlled. And effective management uh, can be done by combining all these uh, cultural practices, the uh, pruning of dead wood, uh, wood, control of scale, and uh, fungicide sprays in the spring uh, from April to mid July. Um, uh, a fungicide program should be definitely be used in rainy years. With this, I would like to end and thank you for your attention and uh, thank the pistachio industry, California. Growers Association, the Walnut uh, Board of California, the Alamo Board of California, the CDFA and the CDPR, and all of you who remain so late to attend this talk. My contact is here for uh, anyone who is interested. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we are right at four o'clock. Um, if I could just ask you a really quick question, though, and then I think Peter will add the um, the link to the final test. But we just had one. We have a few questions in Q&A. And since we're right at time, I was mm -hmm. hoping you wouldn't mind staying on and answering uh, them in writing. Uh, um, I was yeah. But I was just going to ask you this one that came into chat. Um, is this disease also a problem elsewhere in the world where pistachios are grown? Uh, the Bochestria and Pistachios is a problem in uh, Sicily, Italy. It is in uh, Greece. And uh, um, yeah, in, in Greece, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think in, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about Spain, but uh, that's where it is. Yeah. Okay, Greece thank and you. Italy, Mediterranean countries, yeah. The best time to spray is uh, the uh, for butyrosphere of uh, pistachio is the first two weeks in uh, June uh, for one spray. And for a calendar spray, you can start uh, uh, as soon as uh, the uh, uh, pistachios bloom April uh, to uh, the end of July. All right, thank you. All, All right. right. So thank you so much for your presentation. Yeah. And I appreciate you staying on to answer these few and then um, no problem. go ahead yeah. and get you the others. Yeah, thank you. All right. And All for right. those few people left still, thank you all for participating today. And we hope we will see everybody back at the next one next in just two weeks from now. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out. All right. Thank all you. right. Have a great rest of the day. You too, Sharon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.